I'm going to talk about something that everybody loves but nobody particularly likes talking about. Money. Specifically money in diving. The scuba economy. It's Mouthpiece Monday time. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Divers Ready. My name's James. As always, so great to see all of your smiling faces. Now, this video was inspired by three occurrences that have happened relatively recently to me. Um, firstly, I got chewed out in an email from a prospective client who accused me of being overpriced. Uh, secondly, I had a local instructor call me up and ask for my pricing for various courses because he was thinking he needed to increase his price level and wanted a comparison. And thirdly, I have recently taken on mentorship of a younger and much better looking instructor who is fighting hard to turn his dive instructor job into a dive instructor career. So those three occurrences have one common theme, money. So let's have a look at money in the diving industry from those three perspectives, from recreational student diver to business owner to dive instructor. Let's start with the recreational diver economics. Two to three times a week, I play tennis with my dive buddy and good friend Mohan. Our community has a nice tennis center and the weather in Miami is usually fantastic for tennis year round. I have never paid for a tennis lesson in my life. I learned to play tennis for free whilst attending high school. I have no tennis certifications. I brought my racket a few years ago for about $80. I own one racket and I have no plans to buy another racket. I get new strings and a new grip once every while, which costs maybe $30 or so. And I spend about $55 a year for a case of 60 tennis balls, which last about a year. Every time we play tennis, the court cost is $3 per person. All this to say, tennis has nothing to do with diving. Nothing. Diving is expensive. And I'm not being elitist here. You just can't dive for cheap. It doesn't happen. Diving requires a lot more equipment and even the cheapest pieces of dive gear cost more than my tennis racket. Have a look at this. This is my normal recreational single cylinder warm water dive gear setup as it stands right now. Constant state of reinvention. Nothing here is top of the line in terms of expense. What I mean by that is I could have spent more money on each piece of gear shown here. Have a guess in the comments right now what you think the normal retail price is for this combination of scuba gear, the total for everything shown here. Everything here is middle of the range gear, except maybe the Perdix. And remember, I still need cylinders and weights and I haven't paid to go diving yet. Had your guess? Well, the combined retail price of this set is $4,175. Not cheap. Nor should your training be. But cheap and expensive are relative terms, aren't they? If you're a starving college kid, then this gear is expensive. If you're Jeff Bezos, this gear is cheap. Same gear, but it's all relative to your perspective, of course. So when it comes to some potential student of mine sending me an angry email because they're upset about the prices that I quoted them for their training, and they're calling me things like overpriced and expensive, and I'm paraphrasing here because this individual used much more colorful language than that, I choose not to get offended. What they're really saying is, I'd like to train with you, James, which is why I emailed you in the first place, but you are out of my budget. This may be a source of frustration for them, but it doesn't affect me and there's not really anything I can do about it. Regardless of which level you're training at, your instructor is your safety net, your parachute. Do you want the cheapest parachute? Do you want to share your parachute with seven strangers? If you can only afford the cheapest parachute right now, my suggestion would be either wait and save up money or choose a cheaper sport. And I know that sounds elitist and I don't like that that is the situation, but it doesn't make what I'm saying any less true. Diving is an expensive sport. Anyone for tennis? Let's look at dive center economics then. So I get a phone call from a dive instructor who owns a shop up in Fort Lauderdale. Hey man, I was hoping you'd share your course pricing with me. I'm starting to think I'm underpriced. Yeah, you probably are. Now, I don't know what this person currently charges and I don't care, but I'm willing to bet that they're cheaper than I am, otherwise they wouldn't be asking me. 
let me tell you why I was happy to share my pricing with this other instructor. I do not engage in what I call the dive industry's race to the bottom. How cheap can we make this? How fast can we make this course? How can we get a whole open water course done in three days? Or how about two and a half days? My business model is based on providing higher quality instruction, and I choose to teach more than the course minimum standards with lots of skill repetition over more than the course required minimum number of dives, and I choose only to teach private lessons. I try to pack as much value into my courses as possible, and I charge a premium for that. I also always think back to my open water training itself. It was hurried, crowded, it was disorganized. I did not feel like a safe, confident diver at the end of my open water course when I was 16 years old. I don't want to teach how I was taught. I don't think it's right. So when I structure out a course, the price is the last thing I get to. I look at the course standards, how many dives and what skills do we need to do to get the minimum required and the time involved in that. And then I add on to that how much additional time or dives I want with my students or how much I think will benefit my students to do beyond the minimums. Then I calculate the costs, tack on what profit I want to make based on the time it's gonna take me, and that's the price. It's not too complicated. What I see too many people in our industry do is this. Oh, Bob Scuba down the strip are charging $1.99 for their open water course. We need to make ours cheaper. Let's drop our price to $1.89. And then they have to figure out, well, what training product fits that price? And then Bob cuts his price to $179 and shortens the in-water time for students so he can cram more dives in per day for his instructors and so on and so on. It's this downward spiral of let's make it cheaper and faster and cut as many corners as possible. Nasty. Also, I try to make my pricing all inclusive because I hate this nickel and diming. Oh, your course is $199 uh, plus your manuals, plus your agency fees, plus your certification fee, plus rental gear, plus your charter cost. Just tell me the total. How much is the actual all the things I need? If you're shopping for your next course, make sure you ask and what's not included in that price? Are there any additionals? Because that is a very common ploy and I find it tacky and cheap, to be honest with you. What I don't do, perhaps to my detriment, is spend time worrying about what other people are charging. My product is my product, my price is my price. I don't really care what the guy down the road is charging. Maybe that's bad on my part, maybe I'm a bad businessman, but my calendar's pretty full, so I'm not too worried at this stage. And to the angry guy in the email, you want a discount? Oh sure, what part of the training do you want me to leave out? So then let's look at dive instructor economics. Despite what training agencies would have you believe, it is in their best interest to have high turnover in the scuba instruction industry. Allow me to explain. Let's say a single dive center has an instructor trainer who trains five new instructors and employs all five at their dive center, right? The training agency would make about $1,600 from each instructor candidate for their materials, for their instructor exam fees, and for the instructor application. And then the new instructors need to pay their annual member fees for the first year, which is about $300, give or take the different agencies, okay? So those, those agencies are making $1,900 from each new instructor in their first year, which means the class of five is worth $9,500 in agency fees in total. Now, imagine against all odds, these five new instructors stay at the same dive center gainfully employed for 10 years. For the next nine years, they still have to pay that annual membership, $300 per person or $1,500 per year for the following nine years. So over the 10 years, the agency has made $23,000 in fees from these five instructors. Instead, let's imagine that after the first year, the five instructors who were trained by the instructor trainer are fed up for working at minimum wage plus tips and look at their buddies who are making bank as plumbers and electricians. So they all quit and move out of the dive industry. Well, now the instructor trainer needs to train five more instructors to replace his staff. So that's another 9,500 a year again for the agency. And if that keeps happening year after year, revolving door of instructors for 10 years, that's $95,000 in fees going to the training agencies. So over 10 years at one dive center with five instructors, the agency makes $23,000 
if the same five instructors stay in their jobs, or $95,000 if the new dive instructors come and go each year. And you can amplify that out to every dive center in your region, in your country, in your continent, the world, the end. That's how the agency industry works. It pays to have high turnover. Now, as a student of scuba watching this video, what would you rather have? Would you rather have a scuba industry full of instructors with multiple years of experience or a scuba industry where the mode instructor has less than one year of teaching experience, which is what we have right now? So that's the conflict right there. The diving public, you guys, logically, student diver watching this video, wants safety and experience in your instruction. But as I've just shown, it's in the training agency's financial interest to have a high turnover of instructors. So when I have a younger, better looking instructor come to me and say, I want to do what you do. I want to turn my dive job into a dive career. To that, I say, this is the way. This is the way. Because I want this industry to be full of safe, experienced instructors. Instructors who want to stay in the industry for the betterment of the sport. Who want to teach above the minimum lackadaisical standards set out by our self-regulating for-profit training agencies. Instructors who want to share their experience and create a safer diving environment for their students. And in order to do that, I need to teach instructors how to own their brand, how to develop their presence online, their following, and truly turn their job into a career. I also need to show instructors that you don't have to compete to be the cheapest, that it's okay to make money in this industry, and that people will pay for quality instruction. Just not that one guy in that angry email, but that's okay too. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching. Subscribe if you haven't done so already. And if you're an instructor, let me know in the comments below how you're planning to escape the trap of minimum wage plus tips in your cost of living area. As always, it's so great that you choose to spend your time with me. I really do thank you from the bottom of my heart. And until next week's video, dive safe, dive often.